But once more, the future of the nuclear deal with Iran, of course, is in doubt. The agreement announced with much so much fanfare was, after all, just the first step. Negotiators have to hammer out a more detailed framework by the end of June. And now there's something else hanging over their heads. A new bill gives the U.S. Congress the right to review any agreement with Iran before sanctions are lifted. President Obama says he won't fight the bill, and perhaps it will provide a bit of bargaining power in the weeks ahead. Now, Tehran seems to be developing a hard line, or a harder line. Instead of phase lifting of sanctions, Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei now insists that sanctions must be lifted as soon as the accord is signed. Hmm. Well, Warren Hogue is a distinguished journalist and senior advisor at the International Peace Institute. Warren, of course, it's always good to have you here on our show. Uh, what do you think of these latest maneuvers? It was anticipated in the sense that right now we always knew there would be this three-month period between the signing of the great framework agreement and the June 30th deadline in which both sides would be jockeying to make the agreement more palatable to their respective publics. Mm -hmm. um, I think from the Western side, you know, it is the U.S. plus six other countries, five other countries, um, they're a little surprised at uh, at Khomeini coming out and saying the sanction should be lifted right away because the understanding always was it would be phased. But I don't think that's been settled yet. I think that's going to be what the negotiations will be like as we go towards this June 30th date. And they meet next week in Vienna. Okay, we know one elephant in the room, and that, that's, of course, the, the Ayatollah Khomeini. But the other elephant in the room right now is the United States Congress. Now, this is supposed to be a negotiation with the P1 or P5 plus 1 nations. Is there any other country uh, having so much trouble uh, with their parliament, with their Congress, dictating what, they, what should be done or should not be done outside of the U.S. Congress? It was always known that the U.S. Congress would give uh, Obama administration a tough time on this. They've been giving him a tougher time than expected. The, the letter from the 47 senators to the Ayatollah Khomeini saying don't trust our president was kind of a new low in congressional meddling with foreign policy. Okay, I want to interject and, and, and the one word question is why? One of the reasons is we're in an election year and so the Republicans don't want to see Obama get credit for anything. The other reason, I think, is that there are serious reservations about the whole idea of negotiating with Iran. Can you trust Iran? Mm. I don't think this accord is trusting Iran. I think it is surrounding Iran with enough regulations and, and restrictions on its activity that it is probably the best way to guarantee they don't get the bomb. Well, you know, it sounds good, but see, I, I think that the Congress is going to sabotage this deal. You, you think otherwise. You think this deal is going to go through. The Congress is certainly going to try to sabotage it, and there are many members of the Congress, almost all of them Republicans, who basically basically want to kill it any way they possibly can. Um, the agreement that Obama made, the compromise he made with Congress last week to, to agree to uh, accept a vote on going forward means, and I won't tell you why, but it means in a very complicated fashion, he needs 34 Democratic senators right. to support the final version in order for this to, to uh, for, in order for them to sustain the veto which he will present against congressional action. You know, I, I got to ask, you know, this is, this is one piece of the puzzle here, uh, this, this nuclear deal. But actually, it's mushrooming in, if I could use that word, into a whole larger thing in terms of the entire area now of the Middle East, which is very volatile. You've got, of course, you know, Saudi Arabia on the one hand, and some people say they may be in bed with Israel in terms of Israel giving Saudi Arabia intelligence of what's going on. Quite clearly, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, other countries in the Middle East don't want Iran to have a bomb. It's crazy over there right now. I can't even say any other word. It's certainly not Mr. Re Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, by it's, any sense of the imagination. It's more than them not wanting Iran to have the bomb. Actually, nobody wants Iran to have the bomb. It is a basic um, struggle between Iranians, who are Shia, and, and Saudi Arabia and other Sunni Muslims. It has erupted into a, an area-wide conflagration right now. And the people I talk to, uh, who talk about the Middle East an awful lot, are now comparing the current 
uh, Middle East to the situation, what they call the 30 wars, 30 years war in, in Europe in the 17th century. They basically mm. destroyed Europe. Out of that came the creation of the nation states we now know in Europe. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are thinking that's what the Middle East is going through right now. There won't be Syria's, there won't be Iraq's. It's going to be a whole different arrangement once it's over. But it means we've got a decade or so of these kinds of disputes, you know, violent disputes with, with unbelievable violence that we're seeing right now. It's going to continue. I got to tell you, with the 2016 elections coming up, this will be a handful for our, our next president uh, after Barack Obama leaves. I'm just wondering how much of an effectiveness uh, Obama will have on, on, on kind of curbing some of the violence that's going over there with the, the U.S. foreign policy that's currently in place. I don't think you'll have much effect, but I don't think anybody from the outside will. I think now it's spiraling out of control of outside powers. Well, maybe, uh, I guess the Arabs trying to contain the situation themselves, maybe perhaps might not be such a bad thing? Well, uh, that's, I, I, I don't like the theory that when your enemy is fighting your enemy, that's good for you. I think it's a bad thing for the Middle East. A lot of people will die, Julian, mm. and a lot of countries will be in this kind of dispute for an, another decade or so, and that's not a good thing. No, that's not good news. Anyway, on that note, we've got to leave. Warren Hogue, as always, thank you, sir. Likewise. Well, coming up next, U.S. presidential politics heating up. You're watching a rise review. Stay with us.